I received an email last week from a viewer and she says, I have an 11 week old Doberman female who's a bit mouthy. Redirection doesn't work. Telling her a stern no only makes her more playful with barking. She will get my hand in her mouth and not bite, but more like mouthing, wanting me to play. I need an effective way to discourage this type of play behavior as I have a four year old that I don't want exposed to her very sharp teeth and from what I've read, it's only going to get worse in the coming weeks. Well, Dana, first of all, thank you for your email and for watching the channel. And you are absolutely correct that left unchecked, this play can become ingrained behavior, which is hard to break and becomes more problematic as your puppy grows and gains in weight and size. Even at 11 weeks, she can easily tear your four-year-old skin and create a situation where your child becomes scared of her. And having one child in the house inevitably means that there's other children coming in the house to play and we don't even want to go there to think about what happens if she puts her mouth on one of those kids even in play. So let's take a look at puppy biting and what you can do to nip it in the bud. You see what I did there? Nip it in the bud. Oh, just roll the intro. Stand. Good boy. <laughs> Everybody loves a puppy, and not much can beat the fun of playing with a puppy until... Ow! That hurts! What a puppy lacks in pure jaw power of an adult, they more than make up for with their needle canines and shark-like premolars and molars. Running my finger across these teeth is akin to touching broken glass. Which brings us to our first point, which is that young puppies don't bite out of some type of innate meanness lacking hands, their mouths is how they explore the world around them by touch, by taste, and yes, even smell. Most often these bites are actually just mouthing. Um, it's, you know, mouthing a leg or muzzle or neck and there's no significant pressure used and the skin's not broken. If the puppy does bite too hard though, a submissive playmate may cry out and stop playing, while a more dominant playmate or the dam may actually turn around and go all Jekyll and Hyde on the puppy. You are doomed. Either way, the party's over. These natural lessons in bite inhibition are learned by the puppy around the seven to eight week old period. So that's why it's important to leave the puppy with its dam and litter mates until it's at least eight weeks old. Once your puppy is home, lacking its litter mates, now you become its play object. Naturally, we want our puppy to be able to play and wrestle with us, but we don't want to come away looking like Edward Scissorhands. Before we jump into teaching your puppy how to play appropriately rather than biting on you, I do want to mention two variables. If your young puppy is biting out of fear, or if your puppy growls at you in response to using any of these techniques, you've got a totally different, tricky, and complex set of problems on your hands. If one of these is the case, please consult with a behaviorist to discuss options tailored to your puppy and your family's needs. And please never strike or slap your puppy on the face for biting. This will only serve to make your puppy hand shy and distrustful of you. The following techniques are listed in order, ascending in degree of correction. Mallory is my demo puppy in these videos and she just turned four months old. Redirection is a common technique that was mentioned, if you'll remember, in Dana's email. This is used before the puppy puts their mouth on you by you watching for signals that the puppy is getting wound up and about to go into mouth mode. Before the fangs come out, grab a toy and use it to redirect the puppy's attention off your body parts and onto the toy. Praise the puppy when it does shift its attention to the toy. Now, if redirection works for you and your puppy, then that's great. But as happened with Dana's puppy, I find that redirection rarely works well with Dobermans. As a rule, Dobermans have a high prey drive that's hardwired, and it locks them into this zone of attention. When that drive zone is kicked in, it's hard to get their attention to redirect them somewhere else easily. The next step up is what I call a settle. This is more like pressing a momentary reset button on the play to just to take it down a notch. Now Mallory is very face oriented, meaning she wants to play on a face to face level. While her intentions may be just to go in for a kiss, 
her enthusiasm and puppy teeth make that type of play a little too precarious for me. When she gets too excited and goes in for my face, I halt her by grabbing her in the act and using just the minimal force necessary to calmly set her back down on the ground while saying, settle. Notice that my voice is calm but authoritative and my actions are slow and calm. The same intentions that I hope to see her mirror back to me. Also notice that as soon as her four feet are back on the ground, I release my hold and start to very calmly praise her. You can see that she's still happy and engaged, but has taken her energy level down a couple of notches. When calmer like this, I'm happy to let her go face to face. With consistency, Mallory should ultimately respond to just the word settle whenever she's getting too wound up. Increasing to the next level is the stern reprimand. A common problem I see with especially first-time Doberman owners is that they're afraid of hurting their puppy's feelings. Not realizing that a breed as smart as a Doberman is going to use that to their advantage as they grow up. So when I say stern reprimand, I don't mean putting a finger in front of the puppy's face and say, no, bad puppy, to which the puppy's going to go, yeah, right. If you watch a dam interact with her puppies, if one bites her too hard, you're going to see her grab the puppy's neck or the neck skin and growl like something from the bowels of hell. Her correction is swift and leaves no room for doubt as to her meeting. Then as suddenly as it came on, the correction is over. In human terms, this equates to you snatching your puppy up by the neck scruff, giving it a firm couple of shakes while you use your most authoritative and gravelly voice. No, do not bite me. Then release the puppy, correction over. Let the lesson sink in for a few seconds. If the puppy seems contrite, then you can calmly and quietly pet him or her. I'll even explain to the puppy in an unapologetic voice, I'm not mad at you, but biting is never okay. Taking a moment for this calm interaction following a stern correction, lets the puppy know that while it was serious, corrections are not the end of the world. This simple follow-up goes miles to building confidence and developing a dog that can process corrections and then move on. My last two corrections are the catch and release and the no nonsense. These two bite corrections can work wonders, but you have to be fast as you must catch the bite in progress. If you do either of these corrections after the bite is already finished, the puppy's not going to understand why you would arbitrarily cause it discomfort. If you do miss the bite opportunity, then do not use these two corrections. Instead, what I'd like you to do is go back and use that stern reprimand and save the catch and release and the no-nonsense corrections for a time that you can catch the bite in action. The catch and release is a correction that can be used when the puppy actually bites on your hand. Mid-bite, instead of pulling your hand away, simply close it around the puppy's mouth and hold on. Now instead of the puppy having you, you have the puppy. Can hold for several seconds beyond when your puppy is trying to disengage. Suddenly turns out the biting game isn't so fun after all. No verbal is needed with this correction, simply calm. Once your puppy submits to the correction, then you can release. Offering your hand to the puppy is likely going to result in kisses rather than the teeth. The ultimate correction I use, I call the no-nonsense. Few things in Dobermans are black and white, but for myself, especially in the litigious society that we live in, laying teeth on me or another human is a definite no. Even in play, just mouthing with no jaw force, it can be really frightening to a child, and it can also easily tear the skin that's you know so delicate and fragile of folks like in their 70s and 80s who are usually on blood thinners so that even a small unintentional tear can end up looking like a crime scene and if that senior has to end up having a couple of stitches to close up that small tear then the dog ends up in a 10 to 14 day quarantine at the owner's expense it's just not worth it like the catch and release the no nonsense must be made as the bite is occurring in this correction, you cup your hands over the puppy's upper jaw, thumb and middle finger tucking in, drawing the upper lips inside the mouth. Now squeeze forcefully, resulting in the puppy essentially biting his upper lips with those very sharp upper teeth. This is a quick, forceful correction, 
literally no more than one second. The puppy should at least flinch, if not yelp, from the sudden shock and discomfort of biting themselves. And then the correction's over, just as suddenly as it occurred. I've never had a puppy that needed this type of correction more than three times to learn to never lay their teeth on my flesh again. Below, I'd love to hear what bite corrections you've been using with your puppy and if they were helpful or not. And also let me know if you find any of these tactics helpful. Take a bow. Good job. <laughs>